second. My name is Kendrick. I'm the owner of Technology Interpreters, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel, where my goal is to help those trying to get into cybersecurity to be able to gain the skills necessary to find a job, and for those already working in cybersecurity to be able to further your careers. Um, a little bit about me. I am a uh, blue teamer by day. I work for a major corporation, and uh, my job is to protect the, literally the perimeter of the uh, company. I also hold two SAN certification and Network Plus, and um, I've also taught SANS as a mentor instructor. And so today I'm going to be walking you through this exercise, Hack the Box, Hack the Box Jerry. And I want to tell you, if you've never hacked before, you can do this. This is not intimidating. But if you don't already have your virtual machine set up, please look on my channel. I have some videos already that walk you through how to set up virtual machines. Okay, so I'll link those in the video right here. To get started, a couple of things that you always want to do. I want to help you to develop good habits. So number one, apt get sudo to elevate your permissions apt get slash update okay upd that's the first thing you really want to do you want to make sure you update all the different packages software everything on your linux machine so you want to do the update not the update to and then you want to do the sudo apt get slash upgrade so basically you update the list of packages and stuff like available and then you perform the actual upgrade of the packages on your machine this will save you a lot of headaches because there are a lot of times things are become old and outdated and uh your hacks may not work so there are more things you can do but here are the basics also before you get started do the basic thing you want to ping the box that you're hacking because before i, I just literally was starting the recording for this video and uh my my vpn connection wasn't up i thought it was but it wasn't so i was running exercise it was taking a long time did not work okay so after you do that now you're set, you know you got a connection to the box, you know you upgraded everything to current. The first thing we wanna do is we're gonna start off with our reconnaissance, okay? And so we're gonna be using Nmap for this and just gonna explain the switches. So some of you already know, but for the people who may not, uh, I'm using a minus PN because sometimes if you do an Nmap scan, it'll say that it can't detect host, or hosts are showing down. And so it does this thing called host discovery. If you do a minus PN, it skips the host discovery and it goes on and continues to do the scan minus SV, tries to determine the versioning of the different services that you find when you're doing the scan, which is very helpful. Minus SC is default script, does a lot of things. Not really sure I even fully understand all the things in, in default scripts. Minus T4 has to do with the, the time and like how quickly it scans. Minus V and V, it tells basically verbal saying, you want output as it's scanning to know exactly, tell me all the information as it's doing it, the IP address minus p and then your ports uh one through 65 five three five or some of the things they mentioned in chat last night on twitch by the way i just see much i stream on twitch twitch.tv slash technology underscore interpreters don't forget to hit the link and follow that but don't leave the video come back stay on the video you follow that later it's in the description so but a lot of times people forget to, to scan port zero so zeros through 65 five three five and then you can also do minus p minus which tells you to scan all ports. However, I don't think this scan includes zero. So we're gonna do for this exercise, I know we can do a minus P minus, and that works. All right, so it's saying that host discovery was disabled. Uh, all address will be marked as up and scan times will be slower. So we're scanning everything. And you can see immediately we discovered port 8080. And it's showing 8080 is typically a lot of times used for web type applications. So that's a good find. And we're gonna go with that. And we're going to let this finish scanning. But for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to tell you 8080. How oh, well, let's let's talk about how I chose it. It was the first one on the list. I just interrogated like anytime I see a web port, I'm just drawn to it. And I was like, oh, let me check this out. So what we can do is while this is scanning, I can actually go to my browser and I'll type 10.10.10.95. And let's take a look and let's see if there's anything that comes up. So far, oh, but I made a mistake. What did I leave off? The port number, 8080. When I add the port number, look there. All right, I have something. So now that we're here, this is really nice. And I'm going to tell you, I made a few mistakes when I did this, this exercise the first time. It was live on stream. And I assumed that, the, hey, this is a default page. There's nothing here. No, there is always stuff here. So one of the things to remember as a hacker, your job is to poke and prod just about everything to see what you find, look under every rock, okay? And so what I didn't do the first time is I got these nice little buttons over here. I saw this like, ah, it's just a default page, nothing there, nothing to exploit there. Well, when I click on server status, ooh, 
username and password. Then I click cancel. Oh my gosh. And guess what this does? If you look right here, manager GUI, role name, Tomcat, it actually is exposing the default credentials. How crazy is that? If you click on manager app, cancel, same thing. So guess what? We just got a username and password for the application. Okay, that's a good start. So now that we've done that, we can really start to do some interesting things. So let's go back to our Nmap scan. See what else is found. So 8080, nothing else really interesting. Okay, so one IP address is up. So that's all we got. So, okay, all right, we're good. We know Apache Coyote. Look, we know it's Tomcat 7.0.88. So let's open up a new tab. And so now let's start interrogating this, okay? Okay, don't want to plus plus. I'm going to do a control plus plus to make this a little bit bigger, make this easier on your eyes. And I'm going to narrate everything. So if you're sitting at work, I want to talk through all the commands so that you can listen to this. And that's my goal to make sure that you can listen to this and learn. So I'm in a new terminal window. I'm going to type search for S-E-A-R-C-H-S-P-L-O-I-T. And remember, we determined that it was an Apache 7.0.88. So we're going to search for it, Apache 7.0.88. And let's see what comes back. And search for it is really good. I'm going to show you several ways. So according to this, we've got a Python script and we've got this other Looks like this is something you can export when you get on the box. Windows web apps. Uh, if it's a web app, it's something you can upload. It's like, cool. Okay. That's good to know. But why don't we do the basic thing? Well, hold on just a second. Let's go to exploit DB. One of the things I do is I like to check and I like to actually go to exploit DB because it's just more helpful for me sometimes because I want to read additional information. So if I put Apache 7. Dot zero. Let's see, does anything come up? So I have several exports 7.0 my proxy reverse proxy secure bypass. That could be promising. Um, sort by cross site scripting, remote username enumeration. Okay, that could, oh, that's red, Apache Red Hat Linux 7.0. So don't know if that is applicable. But here's the deal let's do the basic things. Since we just got credentials, why not use those credentials to log in? I'm just saying it gave us credentials. Why not use it? So we're going to go back to our page here, go back one. And so I'm going to click on the server status. I need to refresh this because like I said, it's, it's, it's detected that I've already canceled for some reason to cash. All right. So there it is. And so it's just the, the default credentials, by the way, another thing to mention, if you go out there, if you see something, there are plenty of, of programs that run, against default credentials on these. You can also look it up to see what the default credentials are. Like different versions have default, different default credentials. So we're gonna to do Tomcat and it says three C-R-E-T. Once we do that, wow, we just logged into the application. So this is interesting. Now, I do have the perp, like the, the benefit of having people on the stream. So when I'm doing this a lot of times, I, I might have growth is kind of accelerated. But I'm going to explain this to you, okay? Because they'll give me tips, but they don't explain everything. So I've got server status here. I got complete server status, okay? I don't know if there's anything I can do there. But if you come over here to list applications, scroll down. Oh, look at there, input. <laughs> Select the war file to upgrade. So I was like, what is a war file? Okay, let's look at, let's look at war file and find out it's actually pretty simple it's a web application resource a web application archive it is a file used to distribute a collection of job or jar files java server page and java server applets so this tells me some java 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 jsp java server pages are basically it's like think about javascript but you're doing javascript is on the client side java server pages is java used on the server side which means it's more protected right but hey, Java, 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 that's the word. So think about this. So this is just the archive file of Java. So what can I do to exploit that? Oh, I got an idea. Let's clear this out. Why don't I craft a payload? So we're gonna use this program called MSS Venom, okay? I'm gonna paste this command and we're gonna go through this. 
So we're creating a part. This is, and by the way, you can look up MSS Venom. It is like absolutely critical part of learning hacking, okay? But it allows you to craft and create special payloads to be used in different situations, okay? That's very important. You're gonna need this. So MSS Venom minus P, and we're determining that we want it to be a Java, JavaScript, or JSP. Remember, this server is allows, its server runs JavaScript and JSP files. So we're doing a JavaScript slash, a Java slash Java shell reverse TCP. And this is the IP address of my local host. If you don't know how to get your local host IP address, and I didn't explain that very well, but anyway, we're creating a JSP file, a server side Java file that we're going to execute. That's going to call back home. Okay. Just basically let you know what that does. All right. And so a couple of things we need to do. IF config that gives me IP addresses. And if I scroll down here, I'll see my IP address is 10.10.65. So when you're crafting your payload, local host is your computer L host equals and your IP address L port. This is the port you're going to see. I'm going to show you how to use this in just a second, but we're going to set up a listener so that when this page calls back home on port 444, four, we're going to be there listening minus F is the file type and we want it to be a war. And then we're going to output that to a run me dot war file. Okay. Got it. All right. If you don't put questions in comments. All right. So we're crafting the payload. Now, if everything goes good, we're going to be in good shape and we're going to have a war file. So I'm going to wait for this to finish because I want to make sure you see every step, right? Once again, my, my goal with this tutorial is that anybody, even if you just started, you can follow along and you can have some measure of understanding, if not complete understanding of what we're doing. So we did. Let's see. I like that, but I did one thing wrong. I wanted to put in the downloads folder. So let's go uh, copy run me dot war downloads. Don't want to do that. Downloads. Run me dot war. Are you in me dot war? Okay. All right. So I copy that. Rm minus r run me dot war. I want to clean this up. Delete this out. Okay. Okay. It's done. So let's go to downloads now. All right. So I got my run me dot war file there. So now our next step is we're going to upload this to the server. Okay. It allows us to do so. So we created a war file and we're going to go to my downloads, run me dot war, select open. And I'm going to right here, run me dot war is right there. I don't need to click on it again and deploy. Now look in my list of applications. Look what I have run me dot war. I've actually successfully uploaded that, but in order for this to work, I got to have a listener. So when I execute this file, it's going to call home. Remember I used when I created it, I used port four, 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 four. Okay. So I'm going to do a netcat minus LV and P not covering all those options right now. Okay. Uh, but this is typically the options when you create a netcat listener, All right, You're going to do LV and P is what I've seen in just about all situations. There are more switches and options, but this works. So now I'm listening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this because I want to see if this works. And if it works, we're going to get a shell. And if it gets a shell, we're going to hack the box. Okay. So now with this, you got my run me. So I'm going to click on run me and let's see if it executes over here. Okay. Right below. Oh, almost was off the screen. There we go. All right. Make sure you see it down here in the bottom right hand corner. So here we go. Run me dot text clicking it. And if I'm success, Hey, look at there. There it is. I have a shell. I'm now connected to the box. I'm officially on the box. And so the next step is you want to say, oh, who am I? Who am I? Oh my gosh. If you see anti-authority system, you are administrator on this box. Now it's just a matter of navigating to the flags. So how do I get to the flag? So CD dot dot. I don't want to be in the Tomcat folder directory. Don't control C by the way, you will knock yourself out the shell. But if you do run your netcat listener again and just go back and click on the page or refresh the page, you're back in. Okay, so I got a let's go to the users folders. U S E asterisk. I'm gonna do cheat, or you can type it out if you want to. 
I type directory. And so I always do this because I want to see a list of all the users on the box. I say, oh, okay. So I got administrator and public. Let's go for the administrator flag. So A D M I N asterisk D I R. And by the way, I'm doing asterisk to substitute the key for having to type the entire words. Ooh, so there's desktop, CD, desk, asterisk, D I R. Ooh, flags. Oh, interesting. You usually have a flag.txt, but we got a flag folder. Let's look in that. So CD, FL, asterisk, D I R. Ooh, two for the price of one. Don't make the mistake I've done here. By the way, 88, that's actually the file size. Don't do that, okay? So you, a lot of times it's easy to, to think this, by the way, it's dot, dot, dot. These to go up directories, you know what I'm saying? Up one directory and whatever to go back. But that's the file size, don't copy that. So the name of the file is two for the price of one. So I'm gonna control shift C, don't control C, you screw yourself up. All right, and so the way that you display contents of something in Windows is you do the type command. I'm gonna put this in open parentheses because this, the, the file name has got spaces in it. So you have to put that in double quotes, not parentheses, double quotes. All right, so type two for the price of one dot text and press enter. And there are both of the flags. And of course, at this point, uh, hmm, do it like I did, just knock myself out of the box, control shift C. And then you wanna go back to hack the box and you want to submit the flag. So I've already submitted this flag, but I just wanna show you click here. And then of course, as you submit the flag, you enter a rating for each of the flags. So paste the flag here. And you want to do it for both flags. There's a user flag. A lot of times in some exercises, there's exercise you get as a user. A user, which means it's not, not the elevated credentials. These are like your regular credentials. Like you compromise a user on the box. But you always want to get root or administrator. So then there's a system flag, which is a root or administrator flag, which is like the admin, the god mode. You, you, you completely tackle the box. So you want to put the user flag in first. And you can go ahead and put that, choose how difficult you think this was. I truly think this was an easy box. So you're gonna submit the flag. I've already submitted the flag and as it shows you. And then you wanna do the same thing for the other flag, which is right there, root.txt. So user flag, root.txt flag, paste that in, give it a rating. And I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to drop a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave comments, let me know the kind of content you wanna see. Hey, I do a lot of blue team stuff in my life. So if you wanna start seeing more blue team, let me know in the comments and thank you for watching and thank you for supporting my channel.